thing that I don't think the market has fully taken on board here is just how this technology, which is ultimately uh, witnessing its coming out parade in the event of dealing with uh, COVID-19, has so many more applications to deal with other diseases going forward. Could you just give us a snapshot of what you think the near-term potential is for this approach to vaccinations and what other diseases we could now start trying to eradicate? Yes, certainly. So at the moment, I would call it the sweet spot of mRNA is really the uh, prophylactic vaccines, exactly in situations like these. You're talking about small dosages, the target you're going after is very clearly defined, as I said before. And then uh, it's uh, really, we are talking about micrograms uh, uh, per dose, which a microgram is a millionth part of a gram. Um, so, uh, and the readout is antibodies, immune response, and uh, uh, T cells. And the same you're more or less also looking for to answer in um, oncology. There you're certainly putting another layer, a scientific layer on top, which is, can you break the immune tolerance? So it's a bit more tricky, but that's exactly the same mechanism. You're also looking for the immune response for what you're coding on and uh, that, that you really can fight the target, which are tumor self antigens, for example. So that's the uh, next, I clearly believe that the next thing where RNA will play a role and RNA is coming to stay and, and will play, play its role in, in today's medicine. And this is, for example, what CureVac has been founded on 20 years ago. Friends, there's a thought-provoking article in the FT today, one of the headline stories about whether uh, UK scientific advisors are, are right to, to call for a debate about a big wave of infection once the vulnerable in society, those over 50, have been vaccinated, whether you allow COVID to circ circulate through the population. You know, this is quite in contrast to some of the debate in recent weeks about having a, a scheme a little bit like Australia and New Zealand, where you uh, almost uh, try and get rid of the infection, uh, lock down borders, and then aggressively track and trace so that you tame the the virus and variants. What's your view on the strategy from here as we roll out vaccinations? That's a very good question. Um, yeah, in certain parts, most probably you can protect uh, uh, areas from, from the virus. But in today's world, uh, there will be traveling again. And as people are traveling, you, you, you don't really know what the virus is doing and what the infection will do. You see that Again, the virus is escaping. This is what a virus is trained on. And there always have been in human mankind viral infections uh, all over, and it will come again. And therefore, I think it is really advisable to, to think about new technologies, which really can yeah, at least follow up with the changes. And uh, there, again, mRNA will play a role. So we have to think about uh, pandemic preparedness, what everyone is doing together with the regulatory authorities. This is a problem which one alone cannot tackle by himself. Been a lot of criticism too about uh, vaccine nationalism. We've seen that play out through a European lens. It's played out in other places that have been quicker to, to roll out vaccines. Uh, part of the debate now is if you get people vaccinated who are vulnerable, those over 50 again, do you start to send vaccines to other countries that don't have as much access? Do you take that selfless decision as a country to uh, reallocate, redistribute the vaccine? Which, if you think about it, uh, I think most people want to get to herd immunity so that you can have some sort of economic revival. It would be quite an economic hit, possibly, to, to redistribute those vaccines. What's your view on that, uh, about how the, to approach the economic nationalism story versus vaccine nationalism? Well, I see it as easy like that. Uh, the virus has no passport, and uh, therefore, you know, you need to vaccinate the world at the end of the day because of the world is a global village, and so people will be traveling, and uh, the virus <laughs> will travel itself. So at the moment, what we see with the uh, nationalism, as you say, is more or less who is getting vaccinated first. There shouldn't be a doubt that the entire world needs to be vaccinated in order to protect and get out of this situation in which we are in. And as you always start, it's like a journey, you always start with the first step. And uh, now it is only limited volumes are available, and uh, what, but there are different technologies which are providing vaccines, viral vectors, protein-based, uh, but also mRNA. And this is what the preparedness is all about, that we are thinking about to have a global network on manufacturing units for the next thing to come. And uh, as we are, we are talking about mRNA, now the manufacturing facilities are going to be upscaled, not only with CureVac, but also BioNTech, Pfizer, Moderna. And uh, these facilities, again, will stay there for the next viral outbreak to stay. And mRNA will play a role. So you will be much faster so that these kind of topics, who is going to vaccinate first, will only be there for, for a short while. But then you will have enough massive 
capacity in order to vac vaccinate all, at least to offer it to all.